Tension between the NYPD and the community dates back to 1845, when officers were predominantly Irish men. When the NYPD appointed the first Italian detective, Detective Petrosino, that was seen as breaking racial barriers because Italians weren't um, considered white at the time. Police officers focused on two groups, immigrants and freed black slaves. Policing started with slave patrols. It's inherently racist. The first black NYPD officer, Samuel Battle, joined the department in 1911. Not only did cops target the community, but now they did it within their own ranks. John Jay College of Criminal Justice professor Fritz Umbach has written about inequality in the NYPD in his book, The Last Neighborhood Cops. And Battle's appointment in 1911 might have changed things, but the headwinds are growing against him because of the Great Migration, uh, which deepens racist sentiments in New York. From the 1930s Harlem riots to race riots in 1964, the department continued to target the black community. But more minorities became cops, and wearing blue did not come easy. When I came on, it was the mid-70s. And I was met at the door with racism. They were trying to weed black men out by telling them that they had heart murmurs. Retired NYPD detective Graham Witherspoon and other former minority officers say they too experience racial bias. I recall getting out of the police academy, going to my first assignment in my new precinct and being isolated uh, compared to the, my white counterparts who are also rookies just like me. They received favorable foot posts. They were put in police cars so that they can get the adequate field training. And I was just left to kind of fend for myself. And retired Deputy Commissioner of Training Dr. Robert Gonzalez was only one of two Hispanic officers at his precinct. We became the laughing stock of the precinct. They would make comments like the landscapers have an arrest today. You know, they would make explicit comments to kind of let us know that we were judged based on our ethnicity and our race and not based on our performance. Racism in the NYPD is somewhat surreptitious. It's not direct and outright in your face. Every level of policing that I've went through, I had to deal with racism. <laughs> In 1992, after New York elected David Dinkins its first black mayor, more than 4,000 off-duty officers violently protested, stormed City Hall, blocked traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge, and shouted racial slurs aimed at Dinkins. The officers were supported by their union and led by then U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani. Retired NYPD Inspector Corey Pegues was there, working as a rookie at the time assigned to keep the peace. Not only did they have racist signs, they was carrying nooses, they was calling him on the N-word. It was a racist rally. Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams is also a retired NYPD captain. For the first time in my life, a police-controlled mob, an attempt to take over City Hall. If Dinkins would have walked out of that building, we were fearful of what would have happened. And speaking out against the department was not an option. This was a department who had me under surveillance for years. This was a department that targeted uh, black and brown officers who spoke out. Adams and a few other officers started a group called 100 Blacks in Law Enforcement Who Care made up of black officers. And it was our way of saying, we want to be pros, public safety, but we needed to fight racism from within the department, and that is why the organization came about. Change is finally coming with the support of the commissioner. Of the 35,000 member force, 47% are white, 53% are minority. But even as the faces of the NYPD are becoming more diverse, from the first deputy commissioner, to three-star chiefs and more women in high ranks. Cops who once walked that thin blue line say not enough is being done to change a racist culture built over decades. We don't need window dressing. We need people who are in positions of authority 
Mayor Dinkins started the Civilian Complaint Review Board in the 1990s. That was the main reason for those protests you saw in the piece. The CCRB now plays an important role in holding officers accountable for their conduct. A new disciplinary matrix will have police working in tandem with the board. Also, more changes are being done within the department to create more supervisor positions for people of color. Just last week, Commissioner Shea announced the community will help select precinct commanders. That's a very big deal. Nicole Johnson, PIX11 News. It sure is. Nicole, thank you so much. An interesting look within yeah. the department. Uh, thank you again. Uh, to watch all of our Create Equal stories, visit our website, pix7.com slash Equal.